Okay, I feel like one of us should say something because this is getting weird. And I really don't want it to be me. We don't need to talk. How'd you even find me? I go to school with the girl who works reception at the adoption agency. I fake cried for like 30 minutes and bought her a bag of Cheetos. Nice. And kidnapping people, is that like a new extracurricular you're doing these days, or...? <laughs> extracurricular? Yeah. What kind of a 13-year-old goes around in a ski mask? I'm 14. 14, fine. Dumbass. Fine. And I wasn't trying to kidnap you. Oh, uh, well, congratulations on your plan, then. Thank you. I'm sure your parents are proud. Wow. Do they know about this? Is this like they're okay? Okay, with dude, this? we really don't need to talk. <sighs> if you'd really wanted the guitar, you could have just emailed me, you know. <laughs> emailed you. Or whatever. I mean, you didn't have to, you know, punch me and smash my fingers. Would have saved us both a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would have responded. There. I guess you're wanting some kind of explanation, right? Or maybe not. Look, let's just say, however your life's turned out, even with all this shit tonight, you were better off. I mean, we Do you were... even know Brenda and Larry? I'm pretty certain they're better than we Do you know them? No. We didn't want to be involved in the adoption process. Great. Well, you gave me to assholes. Just by the way, just in case you wanted to know, y'all gave me to a couple of assholes. Oh, please. All kids think their parents are assholes. They're not my parents. Then what are they? <laughs> ah, okay. What? I get it. What? Why you need that $20,000 so bad? You're running away. I never said that. Shit. It's what I would do. It's what I did. When? Your age, probably. A little older. In which case, I'm just gonna say it. If you think this right here is like some kind of reunion... Oh my god! Some kind of father-daughter getaway escape thing where I help you? Let me just put that to bed real quick. Don't even flatter yourself, dude. I am not trying to do anything with you. Ugh. Good. Although, I have to say, running away doesn't solve the problems you think it's gonna solve. I'm sorry. D do you even know what it's like? Do you have any idea to grow up with these two people that are so, like, fucking... Uh, weak. <laughs> Smiling all the time. Acting like everything is fucking pancakes, fish taco nights. All the while, neither of them has a backbone to confront even one of their problems. Everyone thinks we're losers. Everyone. It's like... Stop going fishing every other weekend, Larry. Pretending you had an awesome time while you know Brenda's at home cheating on you with fucking Alan, her boss. I mean, the, the guy's name is Alan. He's a dentist. You're a cop, dude. You own a gun. You should fucking kill that guy. Not invite him over for dinner and let him eat at your table. At your table? <sighs> my freshman year, I set a small fire in my chemistry class to get out of taking a test. And Larry convinced everyone it was an accident, so I didn't get in trouble. I did it again second semester. Larry told everyone it was an accident. Again. Like, two accidents? Really, Larry? Come on, dude! Stop being so fucking weak all the time! And to think that every day since you can remember. And then, all of a sudden, when you're 12, you find out, <laughs> whoops, actually, we're not your parents. Nope, we're just, like, other people find that out after all that time, after all those years, and be like, fuck yes, I knew it. My real parents are probably like, like NASA people. They're probably like spies. 
and then to cry on this stupid girl's shoulder for half an hour just to get the files, open up an envelope, look inside, and find out that your real parents are... Ugh, country singers. Fucking country singers?! Ugh, awesome. Eh, my parents aren't perfect. My mom's cheating on my dad. Get over it. My dad was an accountant. Think about that. I don't even know what that means. Running away from it all's not gonna help you. It helped you. Running away from my parents didn't solve anything. I'm not talking about your parents. Hmm. Yeah. Well... It'd probably make you happy to know that leaving you at the hospital that day has caused me nothing but a goddamn ocean of grief and nonsense ever since. I mean, it was okay for a couple of years, but then every year at the same, Mary started waking up in the middle of the night should have a dream or something that you were in trouble or you died or you were in jail. What the fuck a five-year-old is doing in jail is, you know, catch her wandering off sometimes, sitting in the parking lots of schools, buying kids breakfast cereal, looking at missing girls' posters online. Worrying. 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 Mostly, though, worried she'd never get to meet you. You know, I tried telling her she didn't need to worry about that, but Mary was gonna do what Mary was gonna do. Wow. She was a pretty stubborn person. That must have been hard. Yeah, well... No, seriously. That must have been really hard for her. To have to worry so much. Okay. I'm just glad she doesn't have to deal with that anymore. I mean, if she had kept that up, she might have worried herself to death. Oh, that would have been terrible. Thank God that's out of the way, right? What are you doing? Why are you pulling over? What are you doing? Stop! Get your hand off my mouth! Now, you can be as mad as you want at me, but that's my best friend that just died. As I was saying, she used to worry she'd never meet you. And I'd tell her, if she's really your daughter, you don't need to worry because she will find you herself. She will not let this wrong that we've done her stand. If she's truly your daughter, she will seek out her vengeance and lay it at her doorstep with the fury of a spurned god and make sure that we never forget about her again. And here you are. I'm sorry. We fucked you over. I am. But don't misunderstand me. I'm not doing this for you. This is for Mary. She'd want you to have her guitar. Now, you want to keep it? You want to sell it? That's up to you. Good. Then don't misunderstand me. Because I don't want to have it. And I don't want to sell it. I want to destroy it. I want to take it out of its case, bring it into the woods, and just go fucking crazy on it. And after I'm done smashing it, I'm going to build a bonfire and take all of those tiny, tiny pieces that are left and burn them. And then 
after the fire goes out, I'm going to take the ashes and I'm going to burn those. And I'm going to burn them until the ashes turn to dust and the dust breaks apart into atoms and the atoms dissolve into nothing. And the protons and electrons and neutrons fly off and get lost and die. And then the universe forgets it and my mom and my grandma and her grandma ever existed. I don't care if she worried. She got to forget that I existed. It's only fair that the universe forgets she existed too. Little Montgomery is a production of New City Players, a Fort Lauderdale-based ensemble theater company. Our mission is to create community through transformative theater. Want to join our community text platform where you can receive an occasional inspirational and theatrical message? Text us at 954-388-9440 or click the link in the show notes. That's 954-388-9440. Okay, so we are here in the cruiser driving back to the police station after having just picked up an underage female suspect. Once we get back to the station, Officer McCluskey and I are going to work on bringing this case home for a landing. And then the chief's going to come back with Megan. Chad, turn the camera off. I'm trying to set the scene, man. <laughs> context. You know, you got to give the audience context for what just they're about to Just turn it off. Like, for good? Or. What do you mean when the chief comes back with Megan? We'll talk about it when we get back to the station. No, but I I thought you were going to go after them. She went after them herself. We'll talk about it at the station, Kimberly. We've got to get it all on record. You're her dad. Kimberly. That's what dads do. They go out and they tell their kids they shouldn't have gotten in the car with the country music star without telling their best friend where they were doing. Is that what happened? That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I don't know what she's doing. Look... Patty wants to take care of it, so... And it's her, you know, prerogative, so that's the end of it. It'll it'll be fine. Is this because of that incident? Or... or, Sorry. Megan told you about that? No, just things I I heard at school. You heard it at school? I mean, no, no, I, I don't know, maybe. Oh, Jesus. Hey, come on, man, it's just... You know what? Whatever those kids said, whatever they said, they lied, all right? That's also on YouTube. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know what? Whatever that video said, it lied, all right? He was saving those people in that McDonald's. That's what he was doing. You know, this, this is what people don't understand. When a guy has his hand in a McDonald's bag and says there's a gun in there, you just don't know. You know, it could be anything in there. A gun, a shotgun, a knife. You ever seen a McDonald's bag? They're huge. A machete? I mean, it could be anything. And also, also the reason he was totally cooperating and like when he got down on his hands and knees instead of pulling his firearm, because that's an easy thing to just do, is because he was trying to protect all those people in there from harm. He was defusing the situation. That's that's why he, he gave him the keys to our cruiser. He, he was just trying to get the guy out of there. That's what a freaking cop of the law does, you know? He puts himself on the line without worrying about, like, humiliation or embarrassment and takes one for the people around him. And everyone's shitting on him about it and making fun when they have no idea. They have no idea. I mean, you're looking at a savior here. He's a selfless savior. He didn't have a gun. What? He didn't have a gun. Yes, he did. That, that's what everyone... No, he didn't. Oh, come on, man. You don't know that. He was wearing a bag on his hand, Chet. Of course... Come on. Dude, what are you talking about? You don't have to be a freaking scientist to... You know. No, man. Don't start spiraling. I'm not okay? spiraling. You're only saying that because you're upset about... Because I was scared. Okay. I was scared. Even when I figured out he didn't actually have a gun, I still didn't get off the ground. I just laid there. Nah, man, you weren't scared. 
No. You yes. were saving those people, saving all of them. I, no, I wasn't. Oh, come on, man. You're a superstar. Stop, Chet. You're the fucking King Kong of cops, man. Stop, Chet. Why? I'm serious. Because I'm a loser, man. All right? I'm a fucking loser. I'm a desk cop, man. I'm scared. I, I wake up every morning and I'm just scared and, and, I, and I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what I'm doing anymore and, and everyone can see it. When, when I look in their eyes, Brenda sees it. Everyone at work, even Megan, they think I'm nothing. I, I'm, not, I'm not a cop. I'm, I'm not even a real dad. I'm a, I'm a fucking loser, man. That's not true. Uh, I'm sorry. You, you shouldn't... Uh, you shouldn't be seeing this. Megan doesn't think that. You're the only one she'll actually listen to. That's why I called you. Not the police. I called you. Because you keep her safe. Like the time she set the school on fire and you came and told her to stop? She listened to you. And the second time she set the school on fire and you told her to stop again... She listened to you. And when we're together and we're about to do something dangerous, she always looks me directly in the eyes and says, Don't tell Larry. Not her mom. Not our teachers. She says Larry, and she means it. Yeah? And I don't care who the chief is. I know Megan would want you to be the one to get rid of Mr. Montgomery. Uh, actually, the chief is going after Megan. She's what? what? I thought she told you. She's picking up both of them, but I, I think she's going to arrest Megan. But that's not fair. She didn't even do anything. Can she do that? No. No, she cannot. What? She will not do that. Everybody, put your seatbelts on. Why? We're going to get my daughter. <laughs> Little Montgomery is brought to you by Wheelhouse. Do you finish every day with tasks uncompleted? Are you constantly catching up on emails? Do you wish you had skills in graphic design and social media to improve your company's brand? On the voyage of growing your business, time is your most valuable asset. Say hello to your new virtual assistant. At Wheelhouse, we know what it feels like to be consumed by the work we have to do that keeps us from the work we want and need to do. You deserve to get your time back from annoying tasks. Get back to your wheelhouse, Captain, and hire a first mate. Visit the link in the show notes to see if a wheelhouse virtual assistant is right for you. Why are we stopping? For gas. Duh. Well, hurry up. You can stay in the car. <laughs> yeah, because I'm some asshole who's going to let you out of my sight. Jesus. Fine. Fine. You want anything? Um, no. Okay, suit yourself. Wait. Um, Doritos? Hello? Megan. Oh, shit. What's going on, Sheriff? Are you Rick Montgomery? It's possible. Why? Ooh, son. Have I got some people who are going to be glad to see you? What? You're safe now. You understand? You're safe. I've been sent here to retrieve you. Now, I got your good friend, the governor, on speed dial. He's been going crazy about your whereabouts for the past 16 hours. Why don't you step outside and stand by my car? I'll be right out after dealing with this one here. What? I didn't do anything. Oh, come on now. Let's not do that. You know what you've done. I think you should talk to my dad. I'm sure he'd be very interested to hear that you're throwing accusations, false accusations at me. Your dad already knows. Why do you think I'm here? What? Now, drop the hammer and walk towards me slowly with your hands raised. Whoa, okay, okay. 
Officer... Uh, police Chief Patricia Peterson. I, police Chief Peterson, ma'am. I think maybe there's been some kind of miscommunication here. Miscommunication? I don't know what you heard, but I'm not sure this girl's done all that you think she's done. Oh, okay, okay. So are you talking about the kidnapping, the breaking and entering, trespassing, theft, or destruction of property? Which one of those was there a miscommunication on? Or maybe I should add assault now I'm looking at you. What the hell happened to your face? I fell. Yeah. I bet you fucking fell. Look, we're on our way somewhere right now. So, maybe there's some way we can work this out. Uh, work it out? Yeah, like, make a little exchange or something. Excuse me? Like, maybe there's something you need or something you want that you don't have that I could provide. Are you having a little bit of a break from reality right now, son? It's like you said. I've got this phone call I've got to make to my good friend, the governor. And that phone call can go one of two ways. It can either go, hey, Greg, how's it going? Oh, not much. Just feeling safe and secure thanks to the fine efforts of the lovely Chief Peterson here. A woman you might think about giving a hard look at for the next state police commissioner. She's such a kind and accommodating and understanding person. Or... I could make a very different kind of phone call. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count to three. And by the time I get there, you're going to have turned around, walked out the store, and gone back to your car. I'm sorry. But who exactly do you think you're having a conversation with here? Look at the hat. Check out the gun. I am a 45-year-old American woman. I've been divorced three times, given birth to two dipshits, been stabbed one time, and have fucked up exactly zero arrests. I am the goddamn law, son. Now, I don't know what kind of fucked up shit y'all are getting up to, but y'all are coming with me. One. Two. Oh, boy, you do not want to get to... Three. Chief, we saw your car outside. Shit. <sighs> what? You're supposed to pick up that girl. Oh, no, it's it's cool. We, we brought her. You what? Sweetheart? God damn it, Larry! Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. You're supposed to be at the station with her. Sorry, Patty. Sweetheart, are you okay? Uh, Kimmy, did you tell them what I was doing? I'm so sorry. It's not my fault. I just love you. <sighs> Dad's going to take care of it, okay? Stay right there. Larry, I have this under control. Now take Chet, get in your vehicle, and drive the hell back to the station. Now! Patty, why's your gun out? Did you hear what I said? Why is your gun out, Patty? Because I'm in the middle of an arrest right here, in case you hadn't noticed. That's my noticed. daughter over there. You, you can't just be pointing And at... she broke the law. That's sort of the way it works. Patty, you put that thing up right now. Or what, Larry? Patricia. Or what, Larry? I don't want to do this, Patty. Don't make me do this. Don't point your gun at me, Larry. I'm not. I'm just holding it. You're pointing it at me. I'm not pointing it. I'm pointing it at the floor. You're pointing it in my direction. Stop bringing your gun up. You stop bringing your gun up. I'm not bringing it up. You're bringing it up. Stop bringing it up, Patty. Drop the gun, Larry. You're you are me major do it. I, I don't want lower to. The you gun right lower it. Lower it. You lower it. I swear it. to God, I don't want to do this. Stop I'm not making you do anything. Patty. You're the one lower who's supposed gun, to lower your gun. Not me. This is my job. Hey guys, uh, we're in a gas station. Um, You're not taking my daughter, Patty. It's not your call to make. Yes, it is. She's been tricked and, and abducted by, by a country music star. So I'm taking him back to the station and taking her home. You can't. I'm taking care of it, sweetheart. He didn't trick me. It's okay, you don't know what you're saying right now. He didn't trick me, he's my dad. What? 
he's my dad. Whoa. Holy what? Sh- Shit balls. Is that true? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Wow. I, uh, I, I. I don't really know what to do with myself right now. Look, it's all right, but right now, we got. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Oh my God! <sighs> Megan, let's everyone put their guns away right now. I'm so sorry. Are, are you all right? What? You're okay? Yeah. All right. This girl and me are on a trip right now. And considering that all y'all are doing is fucking endangering people, I'm going to make a goddamn executive decision and take this girl out of here with me. We can't let you do that. I realize what just happened was real fucked up, but we cannot let you do that. Y'all got those body cams, right? You want this whole thing getting reported? Getting out on the internet? Sheepshead County Police Department almost shoots innocent people? I didn't think so. Megan, what are you doing? Sorry, Larry. was written by Stephen Brown, directed and produced by Timothy Mark Davis, production management by Ryan Maloney, sound design and editing by Andrew Paul Davis, show music by Joshua Diaz, show artwork by Ryan Arnst, with performances by Krista Millie Valdez, Casey Sacco, David A. Highland, Timothy Mark Davis, Greg Weiner, and Elizabeth Price. Funding for this organization is provided in part by the Board of County Commissioners of Broward County, Florida, as recommended by the Broward Cultural Council. Additional funding for this project was provided by Funding Arts Broward, whose objective is to enrich the Broward County arts community by funding visual and performing arts programs that represent high-quality programs to the public. Special thanks to our recurring players, our monthly donors who have supported and sustained us through these challenging times. Your support is so valuable. Little Montgomery is a production of New City Players. Text us at 954-388-9440 or click the link in the show notes. Join us next Friday for the series finale.